Some focus on Raheem Sterling, who's been challenged publicly by Pep Guardiola in the last couple of days. Almost the get-your-act-together call. Here's a chance to do just that. He's shown faith in him by picking it. And in front of a global audience, the taking of a knee, emphasising the no-room-for-racism message. So we're underway. It's the seventh FA Cup meeting between these two, four in the last nine seasons. Chelsea won the first back in 1915, and the most recent in 2016. And City successful in the four in between, including a semi-final here eight years ago. Well, straight away you saw Man City trying to press Chelsea really high up the field. Kepa was put under a bit of pressure there. Here's Ruben Diaz with Imeric Laporte as his centre-back partner today. Cancelo nominally the right back, Mendy nominally the left back. There'll be plenty of fluidity. Chelsea are finding ways to win under their new manager. They don't give much away. But that will be tested. That capability of keeping the opposition out will be tested here. This City group could be the most successful English team of all time. That's what lies before them in the next few weeks. But they fell at this hurdle last season. Fernandinho. Both Fernandinho and Rodri playing as maybe defensive screens. And the members of the back four push on as they want to do. Kevin De Bruyne, who had family near Wembley, has to pay visits from his native Belgium to this part of London, never imagining that he would be playing here so often and so successfully. Or maybe he did imagine it. It's certainly come to pass. Thiago Silva who has been in the wars in terms of lack of fitness and then with a, a red card in the one real blot on the Thomas Tuchel record, the 5-2 home defeat to West Bromwich Albion. Second from bottom. Here's Werner looking for Mason Mount, who knows a lot about Wembley's playing here regularly for England, as is Ben Chilwell, who, to try and link up. Just looking at the way Chelsea are lining up at the moment, it does look as though Ziyech is going to play very close to Timo Werner up the front. There is Thiago Silva. We talked about that sending off, but he's certainly got his team playing, hasn't he, Thomas Tuchel, since he's been in charge? Yes, and what is very impressive, Stuart, I think, is he's uh, given all the players their opportunities without really alienating a bunch of them who could think, well, we're not going to be in his plans. The only one who, and he's missing again today, is Tammy Abraham, who has scored some useful FA Cup goals in this run to the semi-final, but isn't on the team sheet. Well, there is Werner, who's going to play through the middle today. He has played on the left-hand side. We've seen him play on the right-hand side on occasions, but I think he's at his best when he is playing through the middle. He's got great pace to run in behind. Can he show it today? Diaz. Nice movement by Ferran Torres in his first season with the club. What a season it could turn out to be. Laporte. Sterling was closed down but found a, a clever pass to make sure the teammate was in possession without being challenged. That teammate, Ruben Diaz, has to go back to... Zach Steffen, in that game, that Premier League game he played against Chelsea, City won 3-1 at Stamford Bridge, but at 0-0 he picked up a back pass and gave what in the end was a chance not taken by the London club. <laughs> it showed a bit of nerve. And uh, I'm sure he's stronger for that experience. And he's been a regular in this 
run to the semi-final for the club from Manchester. He didn't really have too much to do, did he, in the game against Everton? No, that was the quarter-final. They, they came quite late to win that. They weren't at their best Manchester City, and given their recent history and the uh, amazement at what they're doing at the moment, they probably have played better in previous seasons on a consistent basis, but this relentless ability to win well, the flag has stayed down here, and Werner's away, he's got Ziyech to find, and Ziyech puts it in the net, but now the flag goes up. I suspected that might happen. Stuart? Well, I'm right in line with it, and he was offside by a good yard or so. It was a tight one, Man City trying to hold their line, almost on the halfway line here. Timo Werner, see Diaz goes and loses the ball there, or heads it into a dangerous area, and Timo Werner, maybe half a yard, but it was the right decision in the end by the assistant on that far side. Good finish from Ziesch. Yes, Ian Hussein had the situation under his control. But that's what I was talking about. Ziesch almost playing as a second centre forward alongside Timo Werner at the moment. He's in there again. It was a good cross by Chilwell, looking to pick him out. Another of the newcomers this season, like Werner. Mason Mount doing well just to press the ball. He couldn't pass it to Werner because he was in offside position. Great ball from Chilwell. The port round on the cover. Mm. Go short at the corner. Rhys James involved. And it's not worked out too well for Chelsea. Golo Conte has to play it back. To Arisa Balaga. Last Chelsea win, of course, against Manchester City. You'll remember it was the night at Stamford Bridge that ended City's hopes of retaining the Premier League crown and started Liverpool's coronation back in July. Jorginho. Rudiger. An imaginative pass from the central defender. Chelsea might be in here, and uh, Stefan's not that not away. There is completed by Cancelo. Good work by Rhys James on the right for Chelsea. And you notice, Stuart, in the warm up, Rhys James is doing a lot of galloping in that kind of area. Yeah, we saw Rudiger hit that ball in the pre-match warm-up, it was a lot of Jorginho getting on the ball and hitting balls out to Rhys James, who was making those diagonal runs from outside to in. Just couldn't pick out the right pass on that occasion. Went forward by De Bruyne. And Gabriel Jesus, just to me, a word with Farron Torres. To suggest you weren't where I thought you should have been. Here's Chua. Yeah, slight problem for Thiago here, I think. Oh, that's an early worry for him. And for Thomas Tuchel. As they were together at Paris Saint-Germain. There's the player that could come on in his place, mm. Kurt Zuma. Kurt Zuma's had an excellent season. His contact. Now the faithful Aspilicueta. Chilwell. Mount. Mount up by Rudiger. Chelsea trying to set the early agenda here. Already had a goal disallowed, rightly disallowed. Ziyech. Chilwell rather cleverly took uh, Jean Cancelo under the ball. And uh, Chelsea had possession again, well forward. 
That's uh, Paul cut out by Rodri. And suddenly, Aspilicueta, who played it, has got the chase back and he's got a problem here. The shape of Jesus. De Bruyne. Well, bit of a sighter from uh, the Brazilian. But it was a decent counter-attack and it was all started off with Aspilicueta giving it away in midfield. And as was the case in the final last year, where it was Aubameyang that kept on running down the side of Aspilicueta. Jesus did it on that occasion. And it does come back to him. Reese James should be closing the ball down, allows him to come in field far too easily. Well, while Stuart was describing that, there was a typical Fernandinho tactical foul on Mason Mount. Mike Dean has given the City skipper the benefit of any doubt as whether it should be an early yellow card. Mount, I think, thought it should have been. De Bruyne. Well, there's still a place for that in the game. <laughs> Get it out of harm's way from Rudiger. There's a high foot by an apologetic Ziyech. Chelsea having a decent share of possession early on. Sterling trying to get away. And Jorginho is often accused of lacking pace, particularly when running back towards his own goal, but he did well then. He yeah, fancied Sterling to get away from him on that occasion. He just got the slide challenge in, Jorginho. Yes. Always very tense affairs, semi-finals. The worst round, as often said, in which to lose. No one remembers the losing semi-finalists, but they do last season because Manchester City were one of them and Manchester United were the other. Chelsea have had an extra day rest they played their second leg of the quarter-final of the Champions League on Tuesday of course they operate from a base much closer to Wembley you could argue for Manchester City that they know this stadium inside out they've been here so often the Etihad of the South some of their fans call it This yes. Is, yeah, this is the area where Laporte can come forward. He's got to drag Conte out, then the ball can be played forward, then they can find a bit of space. It happened against Everton late on in the game. He didn't do it enough, Laporte. John Cancelo trying to slip it beyond Chilwell, but uh, easy for Rudiger. Ziyech. Just got away from him and Diaz was able to step in. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, Stuart, you spotted that in the Everton game a long time before Laporte did. But uh, it did have a big factor in the breakthrough later in that quarter-final. Again, he's going to have a lot of chances if you just look the way they're set up at the moment. If they can switch the play to him, he's got 30, 40 yards to run into. Here it comes. Unfortunately, the pass is behind him. Sterling. We have a semi-final tomorrow between Leicester and Southampton, where there will be some spectators. Rodri. Now Torres. Chelsea quite happy to play from the back and use the running power of Angola Conte, who's a bit lucky with the pass. Werner, now Ziyech, who's got himself involved very early on here. There's only really Werner to try and find. 
maybe Chelsea a little bit reserved in that respect because they know how Manchester City can counter-attack on them, but they don't do that very well. Well, that's a poor bit of play from Sterling. Jesus had run, made a run down the side of Aspel Equator. The pass had to be a lot better and played a lot earlier. What do you make of the Sterling situation and the fact that Pep Guardiola, who very rarely does discuss his players particularly negatively in public, a bit of a rebuke. Yeah, I think he's not quite happy with the way he's been playing. Maybe not happy with his attitude at the moment. He's just gone off the ball, that's for sure. Chilwell. Stopped by Fernandinho. Bruyne at the moment floating across midfield to try and get in a position to influence the game further forward. Has played a fair bit, and I'm not quite sure what that was. From Laporte, I'm expecting a run that wasn't there. I actually think he was going for goal. Do you think so? I think he saw Kepa was quite a way outside or on the edge of his box. I thought he might drive it towards goal and get it over the top of him. That was the one that we didn't see in real time, Fernandinho and Mount. And was there a little boot in the face? I think that's what Mason Mount thought was the problem. Conte tight on De Bruyne. Runs on for Mount, he's got Chilwell outside him, it's a combination that's working well for Chelsea under Thomas Tuchel, but Mount uses him as a decoy and tries to run through the whole of Manchester City. And he's dander up a little bit after that incident with Fernandinho. What a season he's having for club and for England. What we can say about the majority of if not all of these players, is they are no stranger to big games. Jao Cancelo. He works it out to Benjamin Mendy very often, into these sort of areas. The thought gives it instead. Into uh, Jesus, and here comes Ziyech. Now James. Rudiger. I always think of Thiago Silva in the semi-final that he didn't play in, which was the World Cup semi-final. And they lost 7-1 to Germany in the Belo Horizonte. But Chelsea looking good here. Come all the way to Chilwell, it was there to strike on the volley. Possibly he'd be thinking now he could have taken a touch, but if they fly in, you're a hero. Well, that's what you want when you're playing with two wing-backs. Reese James going down the right-hand side in a bit of space. It's a good switch of play to him. And as it's played out to him, Chilwell is making a really good run to the far post, and he picks him out brilliantly. I think he just tries to hit through the back of the board. It comes off the outside of his boot, and you're absolutely right. He did have time to take that under control and get his shot away. Now, Thomas Tuchel looking primarily for a place in the final, but also on his CV, it would be a first win over a Pep Guardiola team. Yeah. Chelsea think they can maybe steal the ball off uh, Zach Steffen. <laughs> they certainly pressed with plenty of vigour there, they've ended up with a throw in City territory. He's had a good start to the game, mm. Ziyech playing as a, as we talked about, as a second centre-forward. 
You usually see him out on the right-hand side, coming in on his left foot. But he's playing fairly close to Timo Werner so far. Conte. Thiago Silva. It's an air of authority about his movement, which uh, also a reflection on a stellar career. Fernandinho still biting in in midfield. Played and scored against Chelsea for his previous club, Shakhtar Donetsk. He's been in the city a long time since then. Here's Mount. Chilwell. Werner gives it to Chilwell again. Jorginho. They've worked Ben Chilwell to a forward position. Likely to be England's starting left back in the Delayed European Championship. He's got competition now from Manchester United's Luke Shaw has just returned to the fold. Conte. We have to say at the moment, Chelsea are dominating possession. They look the more athletic team at the moment. They seem to have a decent shape. Man City are struggling. It's beautifully worked by Chelsea again, Jorginho to uh, Mason Mount, Chilwell as a deflection on it, just as though from a moment we're very high up here that it might take it onto the head of Ziyech coming in, but it flew past him. But well, you're right, Stuart, the, uh, the, the danger is uh, mounting to Manchester City here. Well, they're trying to create a 2v1 against Cancelo down this near side. Mount and Chilwell, and he was trying to hit it to that far post, took a deflection away from Ziyech, but Chelsea know where the space is, and that's their wing-backs getting forward. It's not that often this season that Pep Guardiola has picked both Rodri and Fernandinho. Which... And when he has, it hasn't always been successful, has it? I think it was that game against Manchester United where it was a really poor game. It just makes them look, and I hesitate to use the word about Manchester City, but a little more ponderous. And at the moment, there's nobody from Manchester City running in behind. I've seen Jesus come back to the ball. Sterling is going into a midfield position at times. Ferran Torres is likely to make a little run there. But most of the time, he's been coming back for the ball. Where's the penetration from Manchester City at the moment? Laporte. And, uh, there is the Villagra. Able to venture out, signed for a lot of money, but had a nervy time. He's played over 100 games for the club, but convincing not as much as he would have hoped. Conte. And he's given it straight back to Chelsea. Conte can turn and run through that midfield axis. Release Werner, he's turned his back on them, Golo Conte. And uh, let's say disappointment. Well, I'm a great fan of Conte, but he hasn't actually played particularly well in this first period of the game. He's done well defensively, but he's given the ball away cheaply on four or five occasions now. Digging the back. De Bruyne on Jorginho. There's the nudge. Jorginho certainly makes the most of it, but it is a foul. Well, that's a pretty high line in the circumstances. They will drop, I'm sure. But Chelsea might be able to get someone to dart in on the delivery here. That's what Tuchel will be hoping. Taken by James. Yeah. 
Conte had stayed back. James tries again. Nice. Effortlessly done. One win back to the other. Chilwell. Oh, pressure on uh, Ben Chilwell here. Oh, so close from Ziyech's pass to Werner getting through. But the flag has gone up. Oh. Even with that supposedly uh, strengthening of the midfield defensive side, Chelsea are finding space in there, Stuart. They are, because Manchester City are looking lethargic with their closing down at the moment. Just offside, Timo Werner. It was tight, but his first touch wasn't a good one either. But Chelsea are certainly dominating the game at the moment. In the final against Arsenal, Chelsea took the lead. Christian Pulisic, who's a substitute today, and then the Pulisic was injured, Aspilicueta was injured. Kovacic was sent off, and then Pedro came on as a substitute, ended up not able to finish the game. It was a, a day of dire disasters for the team from South West London. Against uh, North London rivals who went home with the cup. Here's De Bruyne, of course, had a spell with Chelsea. Not a very long one, not a very memorable one. Here's Mendy. Fernandinho. De Bruyne. They're so used to Manchester City to having the lion's share of possession. To slightly reboot here. Fernandinho, but this is more control. Uh, until that happens. Well, that's the way it's been, almost half an hour gone. The City slickers aren't so slick. Phil Foden, one of those taken out of the starting lineup, having an absolutely wonderful time. He's a fantastic young player and he's got Wembley memories already. Scoring twice here for England earlier this season, the youngest player ever to score twice at Wembley for England. The City not so slick, Chelsea into the groove. Gareth Southgate weighing it up from the English point of view. He's got a few to look at. Certainly that man there, Mason Mount, who you said has been in great form. He's playing in a slightly different role today, slightly deeper. Ziyech and Werner are playing up front. Mason Mount has come to the left-hand side to try and double up against Cancelo with this man here. Chilwell. Free kick to Chelsea. Rudiger saw where there was... Uh, it's quite a risky pass, quite square, really, just ahead of square. Put into a, an area of some sanctuary. Oh, slightly risky as well, but again, Chelsea... And again, that's good refereeing by Mike Dean. Mount goes on, emphasising the difference in pace between the two sides in this opening half an hour. Ziyech. Chilwell trying to get there. Chilwell does get there. at the moment Manchester City can't get near the ball One how often have you said that not very often not very often at <laughs> no. all when they go and try and press the ball Chelsea are playing around them they're finding space in the wing back areas there's another ball rolled into the front they're playing really well at the moment Chelsea they've got it absolutely right he's going to talk to Fernandinho who flew in at Mason Mount He's been sent off a couple of times in his uh, City career against today's opponents. Out. 
passing, Manchester City. That tells you how well they're playing. Chelsea. Look again, they've played the ball inside. Jorginho's got all the room he wants to pick out the next pass. Conte. Jorginho. Ooh, there's a ball on. See, had made a run to a central position. Rudiger. That's the easiest one for Aspera Quetta. James. Another one who'll be on Gareth Southgate's radar this afternoon. Now, that is a more difficult position to predict for England right back. He's in the frame, that's for sure. One who's not playing today, Kyle Walker. Might be the uh, senior candidate. Chilwell. Mount. Nicely played by Stefan into Fernandinho. Here's De Bruyne. Clipped. Well, Pep Guardiola, when his side aren't playing well, usually changes one or two things, and I think the position of Kevin De Bruyne, De Bruyne might be the one to change. He's been out on the right-hand side, hasn't really got too much of the ball. Now he just went over to that left-hand side to find a bit of space. Ziyech with the foul. Now he's coming back over to the right, Kevin De Bruyne. He's one of those who uh, was in the FA Cup winning squad two seasons ago. They thumped Watford here 6-0. He came on as a substitute to score. There were two goals in that game for Sterling, two for Gabriel Jesus, who both started today. Mendy. Laporte. Port again. And again, Manchester City give the ball away pretty cheaply. Chelsea wanting to take advantage of that. They've got the pace of Werner. And he's uh, in behind here. See, it's just slipped it down the side for him. Well, to start with, I thought Laporte had got his angle of recovery all wrong, but in the end, he got the slight challenge in. Timo Werner just took a fraction too long there. Won the ball back. This is a really good pass. He waits it perfectly. Looks though like Laporte is beaten. He's looking for the cut back for Mason Mount, but Laporte gets back there and gets a really good blocking in the end. I'm not sure he had the pace to start with, but he got there. Corner for Chelsea. Thiago Silva and Rudiger coming from deep positions for a big outswinger. Oh, it wasn't far away from Rhys James. Certainly, Stefan was flying across his goal. You know, I thought he'd have been unsure what part of the foot to use here, because it doesn't set up really nicely for him. He's almost on his left foot, he yeah, runs around it and then tries to use the inside of his right foot. He's going wide in the end. He's got the wrong curl on it. Pressure by Jorginho. And, uh, Jesus did quite well. He's got Fernandinho ploughing a furrow ahead of him. Roll reversal. And it leads to a yellow card. Well, Rhys James is the man that makes the tackle just here. It's a yellow card, isn't it? Yeah, he might get a bit of the ball, but he wraps his legs around Fernandinho. He had a little tug of the arm as well, Rhys James, before he actually went to ground. Yeah, I think uh, maybe Chelsea aggrieved that Fernandinho <laughs> this time has been dishing it out a little bit without quite doing anything on the uh, cruise scale like that. 
He hasn't been booked. James has to carry that burden now. Laporte. Manchester City will be hoping a slow start can lead to a much better middle third and finish to the game. That's a brilliant pass. But Sterling doesn't get very far and Chelsea look to break out again. Well, they've had a, a share of possession. They've also looked dangerous on the counter-attack too. But here's Fernandinho. A bit more openness to the play at the moment. De Bruyne. So there's a couple of examples of Man City's front players not really, really being effective at the moment. Sterling got caught on the ball. And then when the ball's played up to Jesus, Thiago Silva just nips in front of him, pitches the ball away from him. Those two players have to up their game. Fernandinho's pass was uh, certainly interesting for Torres. Well, Rudiger got away with that. That's a really good run from Torres. A better pass than he was in. If we see it again, Rudiger's position was all wrong. Werner. Tidied up by Laporte. Seen when... Ruben Diaz came in that Diaz and Laporte would be the number one pairing for Pep Guardiola, but John Stones showed Ruben Diaz helped his game, and Stones has got himself back in the England setup, although did make a, a mistake here in his last international. That was better from Jesus. Saw the space down the side of the defender, made the forward run. into the last 10 minutes of the first half. Chelsea nil, Manchester City nil. First of the two FA Cup semi-finals over this weekend. The two clubs with a greater history in this competition paired together. Well, I think we were both expecting this Kai man to Havertz, start the game, yeah. weren't we? Kai Havertz, yeah. who started to show his quality for Thomas Tuchel. But he's very unhappy with his team at the moment. There's been no fluency about their football. Haven't really been a threat. No, uh, for Arisa Balaga, it's been a very quiet reintroduction to the team. Yes. City adopting what they might feel is a more attritional approach. Semi-finals are often that kind of game. It's not really in Guardiola's coaching manual to play with anything less than a swagger. They have been quite ordinary <laughs> so far with the potential to change at any moment. Well, so often when we see Manchester City quite often have a player out on this wide right area, Mares being one of them. Whenever they're tight in midfield, they can switch it out to a wide player, make things happen. It's not been the case today. Yeah, Mares and Foden. That's why Raheem Sterling hasn't played too much in recent games. Thomas Tuchel might have expected that combination, but team are dealing pretty well with what Guardiola has sent out as his starting 11. But when you are on top, it's the best chance to score. And they, apart from that, quite clearly offside, disallowed goal very early on. Really got into positions. The Chilwell volley, Reese James shot that was curling wide, where they might 
use other options, of course. They've got Olivier Giroud, has won the cup four times. Here's Chilwell. That should be a Chelsea throw if it goes, but it's not going to go. Been very dry in uh, London for a good few weeks now. And, uh, it's a slightly dead feeling to the pitch. There's another game, of course, tomorrow. Other big games to come. League Cup final next a week tomorrow, next weekend. Been reasonably cautious, although Chelsea have tried to force the issue. Well, but Chelsea have certainly got into better positions, haven't mm. they? They've got their wing backs high up the field, they've dominated the play, had a couple of balls played into Werner. Ziyech obviously scored the offside goal, but there's been no threat from Manchester City whatsoever so far. It's them that are going to have to change the tactics at half time. Jorginho. Golo Conte's given it away. Fernandinho. Well, perhaps we should stress in Manchester City's defence, if you like, that they made eight changes. Not that much time between uh, Wednesday night and Saturday evening to have a proper dress rehearsal for the lineup today. De Bruyne. It looked like a team that have taken time to get to know each other as a unit. De Bruyne. Using Mendy's a decoy and there was a bit of miscontrol by Aspilicueta. The ball went behind him, he panicked for a moment. Oh, and that's a poor ball out by Werner. Ziyech made a good supporting run. Maybe Manchester City can show signs of having played 40 minutes together, a bit more unity, a bit more harmony, a bit more attacking thrust as the half comes to its conclusion. What they do need is a few more forward passes and some forward runs from the front players. Certainly not been the case so far. Jesus again was coming back towards the ball. Torres has done well to get across it, and that was more dangerous. Uh, Cancelo, rather, just shifted it onto his right foot. Yeah, good from Torres. So I think Cancelo and Torres was the player that was making the run, trying to get across the front of Thiago Silva, who actually defended it well. It's a somewhat weary Kevin De Bruyne, making the ball, making the walk to the corner flag to place the ball. Not too much from open play, maybe a set piece can bring joy to Manchester City here. Half time shortly upon us. It's way over. Those in uh, light blue in the middle. But they're still there. Torres. De Bruyne, better from Manchester City. Oh, well, that was the chance. Wasn't a good header from that man there, Aspilicueta. There's the ball over the top, Aspilicueta heads it. I think he's trying to head it down to Rudiger. Torres said afterwards, where were you? He had De Bruyne on the outside, but I think he just wanted to tee somebody up in front of goal. It's another corner. Again, it's too long. And then the header wide from a decent position from Fernandinho. Yeah, it's a good ball played back in by Sterling. As you said, it's too long to start with. He just gets it on his right foot, plays it into a good area. And Fernandinho gets in front of 
Thiago Silva. Just a bit too high for him. He just couldn't quite get it on mm. target, could he? But I would say the last five minutes has been Manchester City's best five minutes, and I probably don't want to hear the half-time whistle. Remember, it has to be decided today. The old days of replays long gone in the latter stages of the competition. Out by Cancelo, a touch from Torres. Just one added minute. go in at half time I think it will be Pep Guardiola that will be looking to change maybe one or two things if not the personnel maybe the tactics Chelsea will be very happy the way they've dominated the play for much of the game Rodri it's more purpose of the passing now for the team going for the quadruple De Bruyne working hard No one at the back post. And, uh, probably Rhys James would be better letting that go, but he needed to be told that. And it's another corner. Although there's barely time for it to be taken. Well, you said he was weary going to take the corner on this side. He's even more tight going across there, doesn't he, Kevin De Bruyne? He's still been the one spark for Man City mm. in this first half. He's the one that's got on the ball and tried to make things happen. He does with a short corner, but that's wasting a chance to put it into the box. <laughs> De Bruyne protests. But I think the clock is against him. It certainly is as far as the referee utilises it. Chelsea have played well here. They've had some stylish moments. They've had a goal disallowed very early on, but it was a correct decision for offside. Manchester City sluggish for half an hour, but signs as the half developed that there is much more to come from them. We know there's much more to come from them. Chelsea know there's much more to come from them. But at half time, it's Chelsea nil, Manchester City nil. Well, I don't think Manchester City can play quite as poorly as they did in that first half. They're probably going to be the team that are going to try and come out and press the ball high up the field and play with a greater tempo. Saw nothing of Mendy down this left-hand side. Somehow got to get him and Sterling involved in the game. And we saw nothing of Manchester City suggesting they were going to make a change at half-time during the half-time interval. Our two Chelsea substitutes warmed up with a bit more gusto. Marcus Alonso for one. Ben Chilwell is still out there in the position that Alonso is vying for. Here he is. City have played 50 matches already this season and they've only failed to score in four of them. They'll be looking to score here as... Lifted in towards Gabriel Jesus, who repositions. Now Jao Cancelo. They're trying to pick up where they left off in the last few minutes of the first half. Reminder of the lineups, no changes to them. Plenty of changes from the midweek action for Manchester City, eight of them in all. It's three for Chelsea, including the goalkeeper. And the returning Werner and Ziyech. For well, Thomas Tuchel. Who's <laughs> always gives plenty of clues to his emotions. When we catch sight of him on the touchline. Well, and that was just a throw in that he was worried about. Pep Guardiola appealed for the throw and it was given. Thomas Tuchel didn't like that. Well, this is certainly a worry for Man City. Kevin De Bruyne, 
Well, he went on that run down the right-hand side, had the ball pinched off him by Conte. Maybe he can't carry on the way Pep Guardiola's going back. Foden oh. is getting stripped. Well, that might have been spoken about at half-time. It's not just a consequence for this game, of course. But the massive games come thick and fast. Here's the moment where Kevin De Bruyne had the ball, tried to roll his foot on it, and Conte won it back, but you can see Kevin De Bruyne is not happy there. Oh, it was a jarring pain by the look of it. Well, they play Tottenham here a week tomorrow, and last night in a Premier League game, the talisman of Tottenham, Harry Kane, didn't finish the game even though he scored two goals in it. Doubts about... Well, the heel play, and now I guess we have to wonder about Kevin De Bruyne. But Phil Foden and all that he brings into the game now available for Manchester City. Their strength is in depth. Well, no change to the formation. Foden's going to play exactly where Kevin De Bruyne was playing. What an old fashioned inside right position, I would say. Here's Fernandinho. And over the top for Torres to chase. Yeah, but a decent ball by Fernandinho. Realising they've got to turn, turn Chelsea round every so often. Hey, hey, oh. That's rather playing James into trouble. James, remember, yellow carded in the first half. City looking to reach their 12th FA Cup final. Chelsea for the 15th time. Chelsea have really made it a competition of uh, huge success since the turn of the century. Obviously, Roman Abramovich's money came in in 2003. The silverware has been plentiful, but Dominating domestically in the last few years, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. Did the domestic treble two seasons ago. But for people of the age of you and I, I think we still think of the 1970 Cup final as Chelsea's most famous <laughs> Cup win. It's a mixture of the brilliant and the brutal. <laughs> and beat the the team in the land then, Leeds United, took a replay, here's Foden, now Jacques Cancelo. Manchester City growing in influence, and a little knockback from Gabriel Jesus, almost falling for Sterling as they rather traded places. But that's a great little ball played by Cancelo around the corner. Foden making the run. Good ball to the far post. Doesn't come off James' arm, I don't think. It's off his shoulder almost. It comes off his head, actually. That was better from Man City. Those little reverse balls around the corner. Doesn't play as often as he would like, Gabriel Jesus. I always feel that Pep Guardiola is not... 100% convinced on him for the big games, and with Aguero not playing and not staying, then you wonder what they might do in the transfer market. Linked, of course, with uh, Dortmund's Erling Haaland. And Mike Samabia was in a great golden era as Manchester City player and has stuck by the club ever since in various capacities. Conte, Ziyech, here goes Werner. But, uh, greater determination by uh, Ruben Diaz as he came across. Well, if they were level and there was a race, I would have always fancy Timo Werner to get there, but he didn't, did he? Diaz, as you said, had greater determination, um, to be slightly quicker as well. 
Jorginho shoveling the pass out with great accuracy to Chilwell. Tucks it into Mount. Chelsea make an opening here with Ziyech. Chilwell. There's that 2v1 on the far side again against Cancelo. Mason Bount and Chilwell they did a lot in the first half. And Rudiger trying to join in further forward. It was a bit of an issue. So we look at the options for Chelsea, Marcus Alonso and Billy Gilmore. The midfield talent of the future, that's for sure. I'm going to say, after the West Brom defeat, there was a suggestion of a training ground bust-up involving Rudiger. Players fraught with a, a rare failure, but fraught nonetheless. And the other surprising factor about it, with the new management in place, that it all got leaked out. Often these things happen, and we never hear about it. We heard about a couple of incidents, one at the game and one in the training ground a little later. Well, they've been in reasonable harmony here, Chelsea. It hasn't brought them an opening goal. Werner again, saying, looking round, he's so frustrated, Timo Werner. A couple of times now he's just thrown his arms up to, trust me, put me through, let me use my turbo Timo. Well, it was a great run as well, wasn't it? Mm. He went short, realised that Diaz was tight to him, spun in behind him, had the ball been played by Aspen Equator, he was in. Conte. That's a deflection on that, and uh, Stefan will deal with it, but somewhat riskily. Fernandinho played into trouble, Foden very quick off the mark, and City could benefit from that. Here's Sterling. Breaks for Mendy, but Mike Dean spotted an off the ball infringement on Aspilicueta. Well, that sums up Sterling at the moment. Great little turn by Foden in midfield. He was fouled by Jorginho and then he just overran the ball. A good bit of defending by Aspilicueta. And then Sterling compounds the issue by fouling him. Scored. Seven Wembley goals for England, including a hat trick. Jorginho. And here goes Werner. Goalkeeper hesitates. He looks for Ziyech. Open goal. Chelsea strike. And the two brought in have combined here for Thomas Tuchel. Well, it was all, almost a carbon copy of the goal that was disallowed. This time, Werner does make the right run, he is onside, it's a lovely ball played into the space. And credit to Thomas Tuchel, who's playing Ziyech up front with Timo Werner. He was there just to roll it into the back of the net. Good play from Jorginho. There's the ball that kills the defender, just played round the corner. One touch, second touch into the space, Mendy can't get round on the cover. That's a really good goal from Chelsea. What a ball that is into the space. The port can't get there. Diaz was out of position. And Mendy couldn't get across to Ziyech. He had to reach back a little bit, the scorer. But on his strong left side, it was a tap-in for Thomas Tuchel. And Hakim Ziyech. So Manchester City. The seekers of the quadruple are behind in the FA Cup semi-final. Ziyech. How will Chelsea play it from here? Big boost for Werner. A good advantage played by Mike Dean. He might revisit Fernandinho, who committed the foul. Hey. 
Well, apart from five minutes before half time and a few minutes after half time, you say it's very good value for the lead. Yeah, they have been good value for their lead. Yeah, first shot on target from them, but they, I think they've dominated possession. They've been the better organised team today. They had a game plan, whereas Man City, I think, have tried to play off the cuff and it just hasn't worked for them today. Chilwell. Mount. The losing finalists last season. They're plotting a trip to gain revenge. The pain of 2020 could lead to silverware in 2021. There's a lot to do even in the semi-final before that kind of history can be made. Test of Manchester City's resolve. Being a goal down is a relatively rare experience for them. Well, it's a decent performance out in Dortmund, but last week against Leeds in the first leg against Dortmund, they weren't at their best, and they certainly haven't been at their best today. And a real lack of movement, lack of creativity, which is something you never say about Man City. Mendy. Here's Laporte. Chelsea let him go. And while the quarter-final and Everton found that kind of runner a real problem in the end it broke their resolve moving on by Conte tucked nicely by Ziyech to mount Chilwell looking for Ziyech again and they found Ziyech again and Stefan as Werner follows up and wasn't fouled he does go to ground and win penalties but Ziyech had the chance and Zach Steffen has kept Manchester City in the semi-final. Well, what a chance that was. He just tried to play it down the side of Steffen. Jorginho. Here goes Mount. What? Stop him. Not like that. Mandino labouring. Uh, Sterling gets back. They need uh, their attacking players to make their presence felt. Manchester City. Torres on the right. Sterling and Gabriel Jesus interchanging between the middle and left. And his CH. Again. A labouring City challenge, good advantage once more played by referee Dean. Chelsea with the ball at their feet and the bit between their teeth. But it can all be taken from them. Manchester City hit their straps. Or, uh, Mistake playing out from the back as they're doing here. Can suddenly become a costly error, but look at the room for James, who can go at Manchester City here. Yeah, great positioning by the referee again, no complaint from James. One or two Chelsea players wanted a free kick. Well, James fancied his chances, mm. didn't he, against Laporte there, 1v1. And Sterling again oh. overrun the ball. No real pressure on him to start with, he's just overrun it, and Conte has taken it off of him. Pep Guardiola needs to do something now, I think he's ready in one of his substitutes. Elkay Gundogan, who is their leading scorer, although it's a bit of a surprise season in that respect from him. Of uh, dilly dallying on the ball by Chilwell. Just past the hour mark. Chelsea have used the second half to their advantage. Rodri. Now, Jao Concello. Solid uh, defensive header by Thiago Silva. Sterling.
Comes out to Mendy. Can he find a, a devilish cross here? Goes back to Roderick. The ball's still in play. But, uh, both players were down. But it was a clever ball played. I think mm. it was Rodri who just bent the ball in. It, Rudiger was wrong side, wasn't he? He I think. was. Yeah. yeah. Does he give his man a little nudge in the back there? Well, the referee didn't, so, th didn't think so, and I don't think VAR will change his mind. But he certainly was on the wrong side, but he's made a very important save up the other end. That 1v1, ball over the top. Diaz was labouring back, there's the chance. He was labouring to get to the next one, Timo Werner very nearly pinched it off him. Diaz couldn't get there. It's on his weaker right foot, he just tries to roll it down the side of Stefan. He actually makes a good save with his right boot. Yeah, it's a save. And then Werner came flying in. Diaz just got there, otherwise it could have been a penalty and probably a red card as well. But <laughs> well, will that come back to haunt Chelsea? Maybe with a little bit more composure, he might have been able to take it round the goalkeeper. Gundogan is on. Ferran Torres is off. Sterling is jogging across to the right-hand side. If Foden coming to the left, we'll see. After play spreads out following this throw. Three wise men. The wisdom not being put into play by their players at the moment. Said he've got a free kick. Well, it's the right foot of Cancelo or the left foot of Foden. Cancelo's the player that put the ball down, so you would imagine he's the one that's going to take it. Chelsea holding a very high line, right on the edge of the penalty box here. The port and Diaz both forward, both danger for Chelsea's lead. Taken by Cancelo, deep, too deep, they overhit some corners if you remember late in the first half. That's another dead ball situation in which the delivery has been below standard. Phil Foden, who doesn't look much older than a ball boy. There's the says that. There was the ball played by Mason Mount round the corner for the run of Timo Werner. Ziesch. As you said, the ball's slightly behind him. He just had to scoop it goalwards. He could so, have easily have missed that, couldn't he? It's a left hook. And it might have knocked Manchester City out of the FA Cup, but we'll see. Ziyech could have made it a double very shortly afterwards. Here's Laporte. Foden. He's not had his best game, Ruben Diaz, and here goes Ziyech again. The goalkeeper. Had a bit more protection that time in the shape of Laporte, but it was tentative from Diaz on the far side. Gundogan. Sterling trying to maybe make an imprint on the match from the opposite flank. He's had a decent game, Jorginho, today. Been good on the ball, he's actually defended much better than I would say he normally does. He's read situations well. Foden wins to Gabriel Jesus, Fernandinho. They have a box full of magic, Manchester City. They need to pull a trick out of the box get themselves back into this contest. Mendy, James gets his body in front. <laughs> He's 
trying to induce Mendy to foul him. In the end, what he could do was whack the ball out. Well, it went out off Mendy, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it's maybe been a while coming, but I don't think he was going to escape this game without a yellow card. Fernandinho. Been a couple of uh, attempts that have failed to halt Chelsea counter-attacks. And Mike Dean has a, a long memory. He's been in the game a long time. But Fernandinho still out there. Foden. Trying to uh, fire it across for Raheem Sterling. City's throw. That just had a bit more pace about it, that move, didn't it? Foden with the ball. Looking for Sterling, who's now playing, as you said, on the right-hand side. Oh, Jean Cancelo battling for all he's worth, and he's worth a lot. <laughs> Trying to get it back, and Chelsea... Well, they've picked a way out of a problem that looks as though it was looming large. Werner trying to get away. You wouldn't have guessed it, would you? Werner and Ziyech, the two-pronged attack. Werner, yes, but Ziyech not in that central position that's brought him one goal, a disallowed goal, and another very good chance. Cancelo in low. And Foden trying to get across his man. Well, Thiago Silva's done that on two or three occasions. He's just read that ball into the near post. He's reacted really well and dealt with the danger. It was a dangerous moment as well. If it finishes in 90 minutes, we're into the fourth quarter. And if there's a goal here, it might not finish in 90 minutes. And there was a chance of one for Ruben Diaz with the second header. Well, Thomas Tucker won't be happy about this. He's trying to defend the lead. It's an easy header at the far post. Free header when it comes back into the box. Rodri with the first header. Diaz gets it all wrong. That's a chance. And yeah, Rodri scored here in the League Cup final last season. It's Mason Mount who's certainly had a massive workload for club and country this season. It's going to give way to Christian Pulisic. He's played here for the USA. And played here in the FA Cup final, scored very early on, didn't finish the game. And has been a little bit cautious about his game almost since then because of persistent hamstring problems. But he's uh, scored three in his last four. It's fair to say that was the turning point in the game, the Cup final last year. When, when he went off. When he yeah. went off, yeah. yeah. Up to that point, he was excellent, so were Chelsea. Fernandinho. Good defending from Thiago Silva again. He saw the run of Jesus, got himself goal side. Yeah, Brazilian teammates. Raised foot was the reason for the free kick. Cancelo, well read by Jorginho. Rudiger. Well there. Fancying the ball over the top. And it'll hold up. For Werner. Pulisic was in the middle this time. Well, I think that might be the change. Just have to watch a little bit longer, but Pulisic looks like he's going to play up front with Werner. And Ziyech has gone that little bit deeper. Yeah. He was a player. <laughs> Corner for Chelsea. Looking to double their money here. Rudiger. Foden trying to bring it out. Gundogan.
Here's Cancelo. Where Cancelo was, Foden is. Comes all the way across to Jesus. Oh, fancy a shot here. He tries to a give and go with Rodri. And he comes out as far as Mendy. Now Foden. Good to it. He's chipped in with so many important goals in this remarkable season for Manchester City. Sterling. He used Cancelo as a decoy now. He plays it, but he doesn't play it well enough. That was a great opportunity. Ball switched out to that right hand side, a two versus one situation. It's a good run from Cancelo as well. He had the chance to play the ball into the box. That's why Foden's got his arms up in the air, but he overhit the pass. He's certainly not had a good game, has he? No, it's been in keeping with this recent poor sequence. Player who's been outstanding in the past couple of seasons for Pep Guardiola. Playing from the back, I'm not sure that uh, Angelo Conte's ball, either Pulisic, wasn't quite where he should have been. Or it was a fortunate one. James. With, uh, maybe around 20 minutes to go if they can do the job in 90 minutes, Chelsea. It's a real change in philosophy in the last few years. Teams would be getting it long, getting it out of harm's way. The numbers behind the ball, certainly not playing potentially risky passes from inside their own penalty area. Well, they wouldn't have been allowed to do that in those days from uh, goal kicks, but you know what I mean. Well, I'm still not sure it's the best idea. <laughs> Well, we're steeped in other philosophies, Stuart, aren't we? Yeah, that looked very risky the last Did. time they tried to play out from the back, and as you said, Golo Conte just played the ball anywhere around the corner. Mm. Diaz. Fernandinho. And the City have to find a way somehow. To take more risks at the back, there might be a chance for Chelsea to counter attack. We've got a decent weapon in the Werner and also Polisic is quick as well. Is the edge, these are the turnovers that Chelsea have got to be aware of and be beware of. As we saw there, Manchester City in the last 10 minutes have started to dominate possession. They have to, they're on the front foot now. Foden gets a foul, and he's, as you would expect, brought a huge amount of extra energy to proceedings. Not just a Manchester City player, but a Manchester City supporter. Yeah, I think you can say that about the two substitutions, or two of the substitutions Man City have made. Gundogan's made a difference as well. Foden gives them that energy and that little bit of dynamism. Jao Cancelo, hang it up. It dropped invitingly. And in the end, what? it's the turnover that Manchester City are fearing because Werner's away. Can he go all the way, Timo Werner? And in the end, it, if it was a shot, it wasn't much of one. And if it was a cutback for Pulisic, he couldn't find him. Well, I think Mendy does quite well here. I think it was Mendy that went across. Cancelo was never going to catch Timo Werner. Mendy forced him to go on his left foot, and it wasn't a good effort in the end. Sterling. Can he find a moment in which he's very capable? 
to get the equaliser, and then the momentum would be with Manchester City, you would feel. Chelsea continuing in these circumstances, the fashion chances on the break, but that's partially because Manchester City have to throw extra men forward. They're not ones to panic, and there's plenty of patience in this kind of approach. Report to Fernandinho, Chelsea rather back off. He looks for Sterling, it would have been a, you know, a magic pass, a Hollywood pass really. Chilwell just got a piece of it, and Manchester City only get a corner. He was unsure, does he try and play him offside, does he go back with the run? He went back with the run and he dealt with it. And action from the Chelsea bench. They do say don't make substitutions oh, yeah, do. when you're defending your own corner. And maybe not in Germany. Everts is going to come on. Although for... Thomas Tuchel actually, I've, what I have learned about him as we, we look at this breakaway, that he's very conscious of height in his team, and Havertz is a tall man. You see Mendy just forcing him wide, and he couldn't get any power in the shot, Timo Werner. That was his last bit of action, he made the goal. Choice of substituting Emerson, who is a, a left back, really. Since he wanting more from Mike Dean than they got. Well, it certainly didn't come off the arm of Aspel Equator. That's what they were appealing for. That's what the VAR was looking at. He's quite happy. He yeah, knows it didn't come off his arm, so he knew that that was going to be the decision. Yeah, he's used every ounce of his considerable experience to referee this game splendidly. Fernandinho steps in. Laporte. I'm racing by for Pep Guardiola, I'm sure, but not for Thomas Tuchel. Laporte. Now Diaz. Chelsea have been the more consistent side over the 80 minutes, but you don't win in 80 minutes. Here's Mendy. James had to be careful, remember a booking in the first half, brought out by N'Golo Conte. Pulisic, who was a chance for him to accelerate there, and in fact it's gone out off the uh, American. Mendy quick to restart the game. Manchester City are in a hurry. He said about a strange substitution, Emerson's playing in midfield. Chua was still playing as the left wing back, but slightly deeper now, as will James beat. Emerson very rarely had a look in under Frank Lampard, but as I said earlier, Thomas Tuchel's used his squad, encouraged them all, really. Big show of faith to bring him on now. Fernandinho. Out by Thiago Silva. Gundogan, now Sterling. Foden and that's at least a shot on target which Arisa Balaga fielded very competently from Rodri yeah, I think it took a slight deflection here found that bit of space Pulisic went to sleep it's a nice comfortable save I think from Kepper in the end oh, that, that playing from the back again that rushed and Golo Conte he looks so less confident with it than most of his teammates. Emerson from that left midfield position going out to challenge 
Cal Kinsella who gave it away. Habits, Pulisic, nothing doing for Chelsea. Again, Mike Dean, He's, uh, one of the seniors in terms of experience, but also in age. His uh, stamina here has been terrific. Every time you've looked at him to see where he is, he's right in the perfect spot to make the call. Gal Cancelo. Chelsea struggling to scrape it away. His chance for a first time cross from Fernandinho is a crossfield pass in the end. Jesus to put it in. And Chelsea with a lot of experience at the back. Thiago Silva, Aspilicueta, Jorginho in front of them. Rudiger to Thiago Silva's left. All that's going to be called into play, you feel, as Manchester City do everything they can to Gabriel Jesus setting an equaliser and then it fell in the end for Raheem Sterling and it typifies his game to this point. Well, the bigger chance, I think, comes to Jesus here. He finds his, although he would have been offside, maybe, when the ball eventually comes to him. Could he have got his shot away? I think he could have done. And he tries to set up Sterling, racing back to running back towards his own goal. Had to wrap his foot round it and can't keep it down. But you feel another chance is coming, don't mm, you? Man you City now do. getting crosses into the box. They're looking threatening from set plays, and Chelsea are starting to drop a little bit too deep here. Kurt Zuma. with one of the most important six or seven minutes that he might have had in a Chelsea shirt. But, uh, Thiago Silva is a warrior. Do you want to come off? He's holding his back, he's holding his shoulder. Yeah, he's holding his nerve. He's yep. going to stay out there. <laughs> He said there might be a chance. There might be a chance at the other end, of course. The way City have got to uh, attack proceedings. Emerson having a little dribble. Well, they talked about Chelsea dominating possession. I think the passes have gone the other way now. The spell from Manchester City has been good. Can they create another chance? Can they get back into the game? But they've had the more passes now. Yeah, he was weak, too well there. Zuma might still come on, but Rudiger's struggling a bit as well. So we're not quite sure who will be replaced. Five minutes plus added time. The one goal from Hakim Ziyech, set up by Timo Werner. The surprise dual attack from Thomas Tuchel. Is it taking Chelsea to the FA Cup final? for the second season in a row. A chance to change the colour of the medal, if that's the case. James pushing, free kick to Chelsea. Now Thiago Silva has gone down again, so maybe they have to change their minds. It does look as though it's going to be Thiago Silva that's going to come off, and not Rudiger, as we were told it might be. Oh, Kurt Zuma. Zuma's been involved for Chelsea in two losing finals. He took that whack early in the game, didn't he? I think it was five, six minutes into the game, he went down, holding the back. But he's played very well, his organisation, his positional play. I'm surprised that man was taken off, because mm. since he's been taken off, they haven't been the threat up front anymore. Here's the goal. Mason Mount bending it in behind Diaz. Tuka. The ball can't quite get there. Timo Werner with a wonderful pass, and Ziyech 
just wrapping his left foot round it. It's a really good goal from Chelsea. Two great passes opened up a great team. Is it going to be the winner, though? Will the chance that followed shortly afterwards that he didn't take come back to haunt him? Zuma is on. Thiago Silva definitely in some pain. It doesn't do too much good to the opposition. The longer you stay down, Manchester City have got to find their rhythm again. Thiago Silva would be well aware of that, but the truth is he does look quite stricken as he tries to make his way round behind the goal. Pulisic giving chase. Can they keep City down in this corner? The answer's no. Header one by Rudiger. Well, the flag's gone up, but there's no need for the referee to stop the play. Two minutes plus stoppage time. Jao Cancelo. Nespelaqueta. Conte. Frustrating for Thomas Tuchel. But Havertz couldn't keep the ball. He's hardly attuned to the game. Pulisic hasn't had any effect either. There's a couple of chances for Pulisic to run in behind or run with the ball, and he hasn't made the most of it. Here's Mendy. Manchester City having to dig very, very deep. With each passing second, their chances of the four trophies are disappearing. Good defending, that's Billy Quater. Stop Foden turning, forced him back. He's got himself back into that right-sided centre-half position. Gundua. Foden. <laughs> That wasn't quite so good from Aspilicueta. No, and he was the first to acknowledge it. Captains sometimes get away with the referees in terms of bookings. No complaint from Foden, got up and got on with it. That's Manchester City, that's all they can do. Try and make one late chance to take us to extra time at Wembley. That was going to be a yellow card. Once, yes, even when you're a captain, you can't do it twice. What he is willing to do. Foden's trying to find that little bit of space. Was there an inside left position? It's been Equator's coming out, trying to defend it. On that occasion, he got it wrong. Gundogan decides to not just play it in. Maybe the cross Zuma heads it out. And Dow's got the first header. A strange way to take the free kick to make it more central. The uh, logical way is to get it wider, to get a better angle into the box. Ciao Cancelo. Manchester City dominating here. They've outpassed Chelsea eventually. But at the moment, outscoring them is the problem. Into the five added minutes. Thomas Tuchel, Pep Guardiola always looks relatively calm. It's Tuchel who's bouncing about nervously. The prize is a big one to get into an FA Cup final in his first few months as manager at Chelsea. And they get a free kick here, and that will help. And Tuchel turns away. That's a word with his coaching staff. Just took a whack on the side of the thigh. Aspel Equator. I thought was the player that I think yeah. got the yellow card for this challenge here. I'm not sure he does too much wrong. He actually yeah. stops himself. Very unfortunate, the centre back. Can they hang on here, Chelsea? It has become a bit of hanging on, hasn't it? As yep. opposed to being never easy, but playing with great responsibility and shape and concentration, application. Too cool. 
a study in animation. <laughs> and folds his arm as the all his arms as the ball flicked on, and that's going to be offside, I think. But uh, Pulisic trying to go through and settle it. It's a mazy run. The ball's in the net. The flag goes up. Yeah. He thinks that's the final, but it's not. Well, you called it straight away. It was a tight one, mind you. Havertz, I think, won the ball in the air. It's a good kick by Kepa. They went wide. They win the first ball in the air. They win the second one. Oh, it is tight as well, but it's the right decision. Well, the assistant referee took it, mind you, mind you, very well, didn't he? Pulisic running across the port, running across Mendy. He thought he'd won the tie. Not to beat. Up goes Zuma. James. Booted away by Aspilicueta. Well, they've had the ball in the city net three times, only once counted. Foden on a crusade here for Manchester City. He's done brilliantly. Xiao Cancelo. And it's a fine reach by Rudiger. Two minutes. Sterling. Emergency time for Manchester City. Anyone come up with a moment here? They've got a corner. Rodri going in. Well, FA Cup history is full of dramatic moments. Whatever the rounds, really, right from it starts with all the small clubs. It's special. Could, be this, could this be the last chance here? Chelsea haven't defended set plays well. And they didn't defend that one very well, and Kepa didn't hold it when he might have done, and had he done so, that could have been it. City still have the ball with the throw from Ruben Diaz. Tucked back cleverly. Away is the shout, but it doesn't go away. And then there is a foul, and Mike Dean might just have made the decision that gets Chelsea across the line. Zuma, I think, is the player that won the header. Very important header as well. He took a whack to the head. Dunn's calling over Diaz for something he said and he's giving him a yellow card. Well, he's tried to get forward as often as possible in his... Uh, throughout the second half, really. But nothing has fallen. Those percentage balls into the box aren't the Manchester City way of playing, really. They haven't found their passing game. It looks as though they're going to pay a heavy price for a very sluggish start. And although they have improved and they've had more of the ball, there hasn't been the zip and the zest. And you can excuse that in such a, a busy schedule, but the consequences are going to be heavy, unless it's City's throw. We're added time to added time. Mike Dean looks at his watch. Mendy. Aspilicueta's there. Emerson beaten by the bounce. Gundogan trying to force it forward. Aspilicueta sweeps it away, but not as far as he would have wanted. He'd like to have turned the defenders then. But Chelsea win it with Emerson. And Conte. Jorginho not one to panic, and he has given the ball back as Mike Dean moves us into one added minute to the five that was signalled. And there is the final whistle, and there's no quadruple for Manchester City. They failed in the FA Cup semi-final as they did a year ago. And it's a London club, as it was a year ago, and it's Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea. Frank Lampard took them to the final last season. Tuchel's done it now. Hakim Ziyech, a surprise selection, maybe in the position that he played, got the goal. And Chelsea, Stuart Robson are jubilant, and rightly so.